Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now, I've come to realise something in Stardew Valley after all of these years. I don't think Jojmar is actually as bad as we think. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I know, but hear me out. Why do we hate them so much? What makes them bad and why do we not focus on the positives? Because guys, I actually think there are benefits to joining Joja and I have reasons to believe that Pierre could be just as bad as Morris if not worse. So buckle up and listen up and keep watching because today I'm going to share with you 10 reasons why Jojamart is better than you actually think in Stardew Valley. Poor oh boy, this is going to be a good one. So completing the story and the community upgrades with Joja can happen much faster as you only need money to do this, which works out at 135k, which can easily be done by summer in your first year. This is also less stressful as there is no panic about seasons coming and going, missing out on items, and you do not need to hoard and keep one of everything. Number two, once completing the Jojo route and the main story, nothing bad ever happens to Pierre. He still gets to keep his store open and his hours and prices are the exact same as before. He still has his family and normal life. The only difference is he opens an extra day on Wednesdays if you do complete the community center. But moving on to number three, Jojo Mart actually stays open seven days a week until 11 p.m which is way better than Pierre's as he closes at 5 p.m. So if you are in need of seeds and you're in a hurry to try and get them planted before the day ends or a new season begins and it is after 5 p.m., don't worry. You can always rely on Joja to help you out and go and get some seeds. And on to number four, once finishing Joja and buying the membership, his price has actually come down to match Pierre's with an exception of sunflower seeds. These are way cheaper at Jojo's, and I mean, come on, who doesn't love sunflowers? Very pretty flowers, and great for making cooking oil. It's a win-win. Number five, the amazing auto petter, which automatically pets your farm animals to keep them happy, is much easier to obtain, as Jojo will sell this to you once finishing the upgrades. If you do the CC instead, the only way to get the auto petter is by trying your luck to find it in the school cavern, in the treasure rooms. I had to do it this way myself because I didn't do Jojo on my main save, and this is very rare and tedious to try and find, and the auto petter is darn amazing. So take my money, Jojo. Number six, another good reason to why Jojo is all right. Clint will no longer take Fridays off work to go and stare at the boiler room in the CC for no absolute reason, meaning he is now open seven days a week as well, up until 4 p.m. Perfect for your shopping needs. Number seven, also Sam and Shane still get to keep their jobs to earn a living because once Jojo is shut down, they are left without a job along with many other people. And that's never a good thing, is it? Let's be real. People still get jobs and also Pierre still gets to keep his Wednesdays off, which I'm sure he totally appreciates. Number eight, Jody and Pam still get to shop at Jojo, which they actually do prefer as this is cheaper to feed their families, and instead of Pierre getting a monopoly. And you know, I love Jody. she's my favorite. So if she's happy, I'm happy, all right? Number nine, the movie theater replaces the Jojo warehouse when it is eventually built. And that is an actively useful purpose to the community and the town park, compared to the community center, which doesn't serve any purpose to you as a player after completion. And to be honest guys, I actually prefer the location of the movie theater here instead of where Joja is. It fits better, it looks nicer, and it is more convenient. Number 10, you get a soda vending machine once completing Joja, which gives you a free soda every single day, which is worth 25 gold. And if there are 112 days in one in-game year, that gives you a total of 2,800 gold, which yes, doesn't sound like much, until you realize that the other choice is a pointless trophy, which gives you absolutely nothing. All right, so there are my 10, but I've got another one. Lastly, okay, let's be honest and real. Pierre 
is a con artist. I hate him, he sells the things that he buys from you much more higher for a profit, he employs nobody and then greedily keeps all of his profits to himself. To seemingly fund his secret stash addiction which is hidden behind his bookcase. Which guys, this could possibly be drugs. <laughs> And that is no example for the community, right? Also, Pierre does nothing to restore the community centre or help out the community in any way. He leaves all of the hard work to the poor Junimos. Pierre is lazy, he's self-centred and he doesn't even work on Wednesdays. All he cares about is money. He uses the villagers to feed his ego and his addiction, whatever that may be. He literally owns the biggest house in town and clearly has the most money, but yet he still dreams to own even more shops around the world to become even more wealthy. Listen, Joe Jamar actually employs people in town, bringing in jobs for families to earn money. They manage local construction projects, they rescue people from the mines, they give villagers coupons and discounts to shop much cheaper, they don't use the Junimos as slaves, and yes, you are probably wondering, what about the poor little Junimos? Where will they live now? Well, they get to live with you on your farm if you buy the Junimo hut. They are happy here and they have lots of freedom. So that is basically 11 reasons to why Jojamar is actually worth going for in Stardew Valley. If you've never done the Joja route before, I recommend it. I did it for a series and I had such fun and a blast doing it. It was much more convenient, it was quicker. You actually got to see some positives. So if you were once like me, where you was all, none of this Joja stuff, you was against them and you was all for the community and Pierre's general store, just give it a go, and soon, I think you will join Joja and thrive. <laughs> alright, alright, well on a serious note, of course, Joja is quite good for the actual game if you want to speed through it a little bit more quickly. It's much more convenient as a player who's gaming, but on a real, in a real life situation, we know that Joja suck, alright? It's not nice on the community, on the local businesses, they also care about money and thriving and they just get people to work stupid hours on a stupidly low wage. I get it, alright, Jojo wouldn't be good in a real world, but on Stardew Valley, it's got some benefits. Give it a go, let me know in the comments what you think, are you Team Morris or Team Pierre? Give me your thoughts down below, but here is some proof in today's video that Jojo can just be as good, alright? Thank you all for watching, hit the like button if you did enjoy it. If there's any more reasons to why Jojo isn't as bad as you think, let me know down below in the comments, I'd love to read them. Subscribe if you haven't, but until then guys, take it easy, stay safe, and join Jojo and Thrive. Bye bye!